here I was thinking I was integrative and yeah, you know, tell everybody to go exercise and this and that. And then like, wait a minute, I was telling them something wrong. That's why I went into precision because it's like, what's good for you and what to avoid. So um, it, it's, 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 it's all, it's very, very important that people get the precise treatment. Otherwise they're going to just give up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi everyone and welcome into Pushing the Limits. Today I have a wonderful psychiatrist from, for you from America who has kindly joined us and uh, I've got to know Dr. Meisel because I've been uh, interviewing Dr. Mark Gordon and he just absolutely raves about this lady. So uh, welcome to the show, Doctor. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Lisa. I, I really, really appreciate it because, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I have to be honest. I, I'm really a shy person. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, Mark kind of puts me out there sometimes, and I'm just like, okay, I can't, I can't say no to the man. He's just <laughs> been so great to me. Just uh, the things he's taught me. I mean, to be honest, I think he's taught me more than any other psychiatrist that I've learned from, even my attendings. But you know, some of the stuff that he talks about is just like mind boggling. You know? is. I mean, I'm I'm still reeling from, you know, I did a, a two hour podcast with Dr. Mark and it's actually in two parts that I've just published. And yeah. people, please go and listen to that if you've got anything going on in your brain um you know and hormones and brain health and and so you, you you've learned a lot from him i've learned an awful lot from him and he's just a, a, a an amazing person doing an incredible <laughs> work in the world so um and he's brought us together and said talk you too so here we are talking yeah yeah so <laughs> but yeah i, I yeah. think your story is incredible and um yeah. kudos to you <laughs> And, uh, you know, I mean, just to give a little background on who I am, I actually started out in dual training, internal medicine and psychiatry. Wow. And I thought I would love general medicine, but it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, it didn't give me the allowance to really talk to my patients. Yeah. You know, I, I was disillusioned because... In training, it was all about calculate this, calculate that. And I'm like, but they're right in front of me. Can I please ask them how they're feeling? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, that would yeah, be so, yeah, it was hard because I was thinking like, oh, if I go into psychiatry, I'm not a real doctor, you know? Oh, rubbish. <laughs> but because of that background, I was able to, you know, take what I've learned in general medicine and pathology and physiology, biochemistry, because I, I still love that. Because to be honest, I have a hard time just like, um, I would say memorizing things. It has to make sense to me. Yeah. It really it does. Should, it really should for all doctors, you know, like if you're, if you're being taught something and it's not making sense, it's probably, you know, you know, you need to, you need to understand things, not memorize things, not memorize protocols, you know, like it should be, you understand the pathway or you understand the process or why, you know, I think that's a super and critical, critical thinking really. <laughs> yeah. You know, and unfortunately um, I'm not saying that, you know, we didn't learn that in medicine, but uh, you know, I, I thought I was, you know, a great doctor as I know my DSM and I know my meds and I know what meds to give and what meds to give for side effects. And, you know, I guess it kind of like segues into what I'm doing now. Cause like, yeah, I, I mean, I used to see like, I don't know, 30, 40 patients a day, wow. you know, working for corporate America. Mm, that's horrific. <laughs> and, that's a lot. Doing that for about 10 years, I realized I'm like, what am I doing? You yeah. know, my patients keep coming back. They're still not well. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find meds and then try this and that works great for a while. And then like they come back again and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I think I need to take a step back and really see 
look at my patient holistically. What are they eating? You know, what relationships they are in and how are they sleeping? You know, and then what drugs they're using, yeah. <laughs> how much alcohol they're drinking, you know, and, and the focus so, so much on pharmaceuticals that I, I didn't even have time to even like yeah. tell these patients, you need to stop all that. You know, because here I am listening to them and say, okay, here's your med. I'll see you like in two, three weeks or a month, you know? And so I figured, you know what? I started really doing a deep dive in things. And I, no one ever told me there is a 55% rate of failure for depression. Yeah. You yeah. don't hear that from the industry. Because, you know, they want you to just keep doling out the meds. And it's even, even anxiety, it's 50%. And when you look at OCD, I don't know if you know much about yep. that. It's, yeah, just, it's really yeah. apparent to people. Yep. And uh, if you don't understand that OCD comes from trauma, and then here you are doling out these meds to think that that's going to, you know, treat that you're not considering what really happened, what caused that OCD, then you're not getting a full picture of what's happening with the patient. And unfortunately, we don't have that luxury to sit there and really listen, because at times we will just like throw that at the therapist and say, you know, you treat this, but then you know what? I need to appreciate like why these treatments I'm giving my patient is not doing it because like maybe it's just more than just depression and more than just anxiety, but you know, the, their background, I really want to know that. Mm -hmm. Now I've learned to really listen to it. And I'm like, Oh, I get, I get it. This is why you haven't responded. Yeah. And you know, bipolar disorder is one of the hardest things to treat. And the most dangerous part of bipolar disorder is the um, depression. You know, people love it when they're manic. You know, like, you know, that's why a lot of bipolar patients don't want to get their self treated, mm. you know, but when they come off that high, that's the highest risk for suicide. Wow. So two thirds don't respond to mm. first line treatment. Mm -hmm. So that's about 66%. I'm like, that's, that's really something that we needed to address in mental health. And then sometimes what happens is like, here we are, we're trying to figure out what treatment to give, but if we don't have a pathway to really figure out what's wrong with people, sometimes, you know, it's really, it, it makes them worse. And, you know, the episodes come, you know, more often and it changes the brain to not really what it should be. Because what I have understood is that um, mental health, the, the disability is in, in, young, in young people, you know, it's a leading cause of disability in young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, by 2030, they say the um, mental health disorders are, are going to cost the world $6 trillion. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And because we don't focus on the whole person, we don't correlate how their mental health affects their physical health. It, 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 we, are, we are a whole person. We, you know, our brain affects how we feel and it's in our heart, that's in our stomach. And uh, so we have to consider all those things. And, and you know, and it, it really breaks my heart to, you know, hear doctors tell my patients before they came to me, it's all in your head. <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah. like, you know what? I don't want to believe that until I really do a deep dive in what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a, you know, like, a, see, so you're a holistic psychiatrist. You you yes. look at the whole person, and you, I loved it. Um, you know, when I was reading about you, um how you use things like genetics and personalized precision psychiatry, where you're looking at the person's genetic makeup, for example, and how does that actually 
predispose them and impact their their life and then things like transcranial um, magnetic stimulation which we can get into and some of the other modalities that you use in order to to fix this whole person because we're not a head we're not a heart we're not a lung we're not a cancer cell and we're not you know when I'm working with people like when you go to the oncologist, it's like uh, you're a cancer cell to them. You're just like, <laughs> they're, not, they're not looking into your background. They don't have the time. They don't have the the ability to do that where they're looking, well, how did you get to be in this place? Is there a psychiatric component to it? Is there an environmental component? Is there a um, genetic component to it? It's just cancer cell, here's chemo, here's the surgery, here's the radiation. Uh, here's the immune yeah. therapy. You know, like you, you're more than a cancer cell. You're a person with a whole lot of, but it's complex, right? When you go down medicine and that approach, it, it is a layer upon layer and it's complicated and it takes time and it takes, but it actually gets the job done much more efficiently rather than a band aid approach. Do you find, exactly. yeah, 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 it, it, exactly. Because, you know, I thought, just knowing about genetic testing, that's where that's where the solution is. But I found out later, just uh, solely relying on a list of medicines I should give and I should avoid, I wasn't getting anywhere. So I actually started looking at things the other way. I look at, um, are you making enough serotonin, dopamine, or epinephrine? what is your potential for brain healing and um how do you metabolize the dopamine and uh, and once i really learned that and how like it really affects people because I, i'm sorry nobody could answer that question i had to beat my head <laughs> trying to like figure it out i was like no there there is something to this why does it keep popping up in these tests and then even then they can't even tell me so you know i, I had to go different paths and and really learning about even some of the metabolism i learned from nutritionists you know mm -hmm. i learned from pharmacologists because like the general medicine doctor can't tell me these things because they're so focused on whatever they have at hand. And, you know, in terms of like really do, doing a deep dive and like, what does this mean? You know, it doesn't happen, but I had to do it for me because like I said, I, I, it has to make sense to me. I don't just like, you know, um, listen to someone and, and I do that I was like I because for me I would feel better knowing I told my patient this is the rationale why you have to do this yeah yeah you know and um so yeah so that was only part of it so then I started getting into the integrative world of they called it integrative medicine for mental health and um Dr. Daniel Amen mm. I think you've heard I, about, yeah I mean yeah, like yeah. you know he's he's incredible and you know he he his brain is, you know, amazing, but, and then he taught me, you know, I, I don't understand why it was such an epiphany to me to say, it's not about your mental health. It's about your brain health. And I'm like, bingo, you know, it's like, yeah. why are we not <laughs> yeah. addressing this problem in my patients? You know, like but there's that's a not physical, even... yeah, there's a physical yeah. reason, you know, like I was working with a young man at the moment and he's, like being diagnosed with depression and anxiety and being, you know, bedridden basically for the last couple of years and, you know, exhausted and, you know, a young man can't work. And they just put in one pill after the other into him. And he was like desperate, came to see me. We started hyperbaric oxygen and then we started to unravel the rest of the story and started to work with him on a number of levels and with a number of colleagues that are um, roped in as well. Uh, from you know neurochiro, so, so the physical, mechanical to um, uh, EEGs and you know neurostim feedback and all of that sort of thing, um, and you know he, he's it's a long, slow process. We're now six months in, and he's probably mm, 60, 60, 70 percent better than he was, but still got a way to go, right? And he's throwing the bus at it, and it costs a lot of money, but he'd been like that for years, and what they were all not seeing was the traumatic brain injuries, the repeated traumatic brain injuries from elite level sport 
and he had landed on his head you know, so many times, you know, snowboarding and surfing and, you know, uh, mountain biking and all of this sort of stuff where he'd had repeated brain injuries, like, and physical, like his, you know, jaws out and things like this. It's like, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're actually working on those aspects, you know, the hormonal aspects, all of these things that we have to address. And it's a long, hard road, but it's one that's going to lead to success. You know, that's going to lead to him having been able to work again and not the Band-Aid approach of here's another another drug, which, you know, and get them off the drugs. Some of the drugs you know, which we've done in, you know, in, in collaboration with doctors, uh, has been hell for him to get him off the drugs and the, some of the, the, um, uh, things like being the and stuff. Whoa. Powerful. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's really hard to get off of. So yeah, what, what I would like to do is that I really you want to do a deep dive in patient. I look at their genetics I look at where they are deficient in their vitamins and metabolism of vitamins. I look at their inflammation markers and then I look at the hormones and then I'm not satisfied with just looking at their basic hormones. I want to know why these things are abnormal. And that's when Dr. Mark Gordon came in and taught me like, hey, you know, we need to know why these things are low. Is it a brain injury or is it just like, you know, change of life and so forth, but because it totally changes the um, approach to how you treat the patient. You know, if it's a brain injury, you gotta work on healing the brain, supplements to heal the brain. And then I started also looking into toxins and I think uh, Dr. McGordon even mentioned it in his podcast with you about glyphosate and heavy oh, metals. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. That itself, can disrupt your neurotransmitters. And as he stated, uh, you know, it can decrease serotonin, dopamine, or epinephrine. And then it increases your glutamate, which is excitatory. Yeah. So maybe that's why a lot of these people with quote unquote PTSD, you know, are it's maybe there's something going on that's causing the imbalance. But then inflammation itself psychologic trauma itself can also release the same kind of chemicals as if a brain injury would happen. So um, yeah, this morning I was just, I had a patient that I had no idea really she was brain injury. Yep. And um, you know, she came because she wanted to get TMS because it helped with her report. I was like, okay. But I told her, I'm not gonna be just doing that on you. I need for you to humor me. Let's look at your genetics. Let's look at your labs. And her labs were like, I'm surprised you're standing and talking to me. <laughs> wow. She absolutely yes. had no brain hormones. Wow. And she absolutely had no sex hormones. And I'm like, have you wow. had a brain injury? <laughs> and then, you know, it's, and that's why I, I really like to, you know, do this with my patients to really like find out because some of them don't even think that they have a brain injury. No, and a lot of people don't know, like, because it could have happened when you were eight years old and you, you've uh -huh. forgotten it, or you think it's so far past that it no longer is relevant. And that's so not true. And brain injuries just don't heal on their own accord. We, we sort of rewire and we're able to cope a lot of the time, but the actual uh, injury is still there and it's still causing damage and you still having an inflammatory response or your hormones are still offline and so on. And you don't, most people don't equate that thing that happened three years ago with the thing they're dealing with now. And that's, that's problematic because, you know, they, but I went to the doctor when I had the brain injury and I went to the ED and they did a CT and they told me I was fine. There's no bleeding. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, that's not that does not show what's going on in the brain that just shows if you need a surgery right now because you're dying yes it'll pick that level of damage up but it won't pick up the uh the, the rest of it you know the the torn axons and the inflammatory biochemical cascades that are happening in the weeks after you know that that's that's another pet peeve of mine when i see um like you know um contact sports rugby players and stuff and they do uh, head injury assessments on the side of the paddock and then they go oh no you're fine you know you just got knocked out on the paddock but no no you're fine or you had a big knock 
we'll put you back out again because your eyes are doing, they're okay and you've still got strength yeah. in your arms. It's, that's not an assessment. I'm sorry. Like that is, it's happening yeah. in the weeks after. And when you get another injury on top of that injury, that's exponential then. And those young guys yeah. are, you know, are, are in for trouble later on and in, in, in ladies. Um, yeah. So it, the head injury piece is huge. Yeah, it's it's amazing because like um because I do deal with treatment resistant cases. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's kind of sad that people come to me when they're out of options, and I'm like, okay, but <laughs> you know, it's like they're desperate. You know, yeah. they come to me in a desperate state. I said, okay, well, we're not going to just do standard treatment. You know, I, I'm not even going to do anything until I really know what I'm working with. Yeah. And yeah. then once I get the patient and I see everything and listening to their story and I'm like, listen, this is why you have not responded to treatment. You know, your genetics didn't help. Then you had trauma, you know, physical trauma, psychological trauma. You've had a head injury. You were in an accident. You were in the military. You have toxins. You have inflammation. They whacked your hormones, you know. So like, you know, so this is, this is the kind of thing that I have to explain to my patients, but what's great about with how I practice is because it does take away the stigma of mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. It's the way the shame, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's right here. This is why you've been dealing with it for decades. It's (laughs) It's a physical thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is why you felt like crap. Nothing works things made you worse. And so um, we're going to unwind this. And, and, you know, it's it's still hard sometimes for patients to grasp it. You Mm -hmm. know, they come to me because, well, I hear you're good. You know, I was like, well, this is why I'm good. Okay. But if you don't want to do this, (laughs) then you can just go down the street and find the magic pill that you think you're going to find. Unfortunately, that's a myth. Uh, Yeah. I hear you, like, because uh, uh, I'm a bit in the same boat. I'm not psychiatrist, obviously, but I get the cases that are desperate, and then they end up at my doorstep, and then it's like you've got a ah, hell of a mess to unravel. Which you know, I'd love to be working more with the ones just starting out on their journey, and then putting them in the right direction would be a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but they and I and I can tell pretty quickly if I've got someone who's just looking for the magic bullet. And, and I stop it right there because I know that if that's the approach, then we're not going to get anywhere and I'm going to waste their time and effort and my, you know, limited brain power um, on, on the case. If they are there to work and they know that it's going to take a process and it's going to take a long time and it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of pills and lifestyle changes and exercise and you know all of the aspects that go into it taking out all the environmental toxins as best they can and you know all of these aspects that we can work on and they're in for the long haul then we can get somewhere there is no magic bullet there is no you come to me once and oh oh you know because i get get a lot of people go oh you fixed your mom amazing amazing can you do it for my dad it's like that depends. Yeah. That's a massive, like, uh, she's had 24 7 care for nine years. Uh, st- are you, you know, are you in for the long haul or are you, you know, and, and she was an extreme case and she's a miracle, but um, it, 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 that's what it takes, right? Day in, day out, day in, day out, yeah. grinding it. Um, and and with someone of that, that severity, um, but you know, even with lesser cases, it's still going to take effort and it's still going to take changes you know um i love working with athletes because athletes tend to have a mentality of work you know of of grinding it out they understand that biology to change it takes time they understand training they understand getting up every day when you don't feel like it and doing the thing that you have to do so it's a lot easier to work with people who have been um you know athletes in some way shape or form i find yeah because and military, they are, yeah, military, like that yeah. I love working with my veterans because they totally. Really, really appreciate, uh, you know, um, how I help them. It's not just here's a pill, you know. So, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, maybe hundred percent, basically about all brain injuries, <laughs> and that's how they wind up at my doorstep because they're psychiatrists in the VA. I was like, I don't know what to do with you, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to go out to the community psychiatrist and 
yeah, yeah. Uh, the VA is, is kind of funny. They, they were really mm -hmm. helpful in the beginning to try to, you know, help these veterans. But now sometimes there's like roadblocks that's happening right now. That's but, what I hear. Um, hmm. Yeah, I so hear that but, all around, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, and, and I have to tell them, you, you just have to fight for your right. You know, I had one patient that called the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Go straight to the top. <laughs> and he got what he needed. Exactly. You know, so I, yeah, I have to just tell these guys, like, you know, you just have to advocate for yourself. And uh, and then we can work on it, making sure that we can continue to treat you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the, the thing about, like, um, what I do is, is that like sometimes though, yeah, you know, some patients just look for that magic bullet and I, and I had to take a step back and I tell them, listen, how long have you been suffering with this? <laughs> They're like decades. And I'm like, well, can you give me a year <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. or two to try to like, you know, help you. And I, you know, because we're going to do something different here. Okay. We are going to look at you as a whole person not just like listen to your symptoms and i think this is the medicine you know that's good for you and, and don't get me wrong because um when you when you define integrative psychiatry it really is a combination of conventional and novel treatments mm -hmm. you know you do what you can mm -hmm. to get the patient better yep absolutely know? both sides of the yeah. equation yeah totally. yeah and Integrated psychiatry, you know, it is, you know, that it's also defined as using science, yes, you know, to um, how to treat the patient, you know, and so like, you know, it's like, we're, we're not coming at this from on top of my head here, people, you know, yeah. like, um, I, I can honestly say that um, I've had some really, really amazing people who took me under their wing, you know, including Mark Gordon, who really taught me all about um, a new theory when it comes to mental illness. It's, it, you know, it was, when I met him, I thought he was just going to teach me how to do hormones. All right, let's do it. And then uh, he's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> We're going to work on inflammation. I'm like, what's yeah. that? You know? <laughs> but I mean, because, you know, just going directly to hormone treatment with my patients without, without considering inflammation, I was not getting the results I needed to see. In fact, some of them were like having adverse reactions. So I had to take a step back and say, okay, you know, I, I got to figure out, you know, what are my inflammation markers? So I, I run that too. So like, oh, you know, so a lot of my patients actually, you know, if they come to me thinking they're just going to get hormones, I, I say, I'm not doing anything on you for the next 90 days. We are going to clean you out because if I give you hormones now, you're going to be in a worse state. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we have to consider. And then sometimes if it's that bad of an inflammation, I will say, humor me, humor me and please do my tox panel. And then it's amazing what I find. You know, yep. so I have people who are 100% filled with glyphosate and they've been diagnosed with quasi MS. And, um, wow. And it's like, it's not that, you know, it's glyphosate that killed their nervous system. Wow. And it takes time, you know, to, um, is there to anything we can do for glyphosate? How do you get glyphosate out of the patient? Yeah. I mean, that's well, a, I, you know, a two I, minute God, I do have somebody that actually, you know, kind of forced me under her wing because I was sending her on my patient. She's like, you're killing me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need to teach you this. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this, you know, but like, um, yeah, environmental toxins really do a lot of damage yeah. to someone's mental health, you know? it throws their neurotransmitters off. It increases their glutamate, which is excitatory. And so, you know, they're like going like this and then like nothing is balancing it out. And so um, we have to work on removing the toxins. So I do have a protocol for that, depending on how bad it is. You know, I give more dosages than others. Um, I use sometimes, especially with heavy metal toxicity, um, and glyphosate, um, there's a ingredient called zeolite, 
And, yes, you know, love zeolite. Yep. That, you know, it, it doesn't work, and but like I think it's because they're oh, just yeah. not using high dosages of it. And I've seen it work in my patients. They went from a hundred of glyphosate down to fifty percent in wow. like three six wow. months. Do you have to so, with the zeolite? Do you have to keep it away from the other supplements and minerals and things? Does it take the minerals out like some of the other binders do, like bentonite clay or or things like that? Or zeolite not not too bad yeah. in the way it, it gets rid of stuff. No, no, it's not that. You know, it, it really does work on just getting rid of the bad things. Wow. But then I also use another kind of um, detox, which really works hard at targeting the toxins, what's not supposed to be there, as mm -hmm. well as decreasing the inflammation. Which one is that? Because of like, you know, because the toxins are there. That's another layer in itself. When you are exposed to things 24 seven, you're full of it. Mm. Your inflammation does not stop. So no. what happens to that? Goes to the brain <laughs> and then it like starts to build antibodies to the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland so you're going to have hormonal deficiencies so wow. brain injury can happen in lots of ways because there was a patient today is you know the wife's like you did not have brain injury i go then why am i seeing this in your blood work you know and then i go well there's different ways yeah this is what i learned from um, the movie quiet explosion where like mm. It doesn't have to be trauma like an impact. No. It has to, you have to, it can happen in surgery. And then, you know, they, the wife told me, you know, he had back surgery and he had a dural bleed. I mean, like the CSF fluids coming out of already. And then he had the worst headache in his life. I'm like, well, there you go. What is in a brain? Yeah. It, it's a skull full of jagged edges. So it's just, doing that you know like scraping against no fluid and um yep. there you go brain injury yeah it, it, there's so many ways for us to get brain injuries i don't think any of us you know the time we had our 40s 50s that have not got a brain injury of one shape or form or another because it's environmental it's toxins it's your surgeries it's your anesthetics it's your it, it, you know, as well as your impact traumas, as well as whiplash, where you, you, you don't need to be knocked out either. That's another myth that people think. Um, and, and or it's even bad foods that you're allergic to, leaky gut, which causes inflammation in the body, which goes to the brain, and so on and so forth. So there's there's so many ways for us to get brain injuries of of various types. Uh, and you know, there's lots of things that we need to do. So so. From a, I, one of the areas that I haven't focused on yet in my um, clinic is is working out uh, the toxins, the mycotoxins, the molds, the that type of thing. That's I've I've just not got there yet, really. <laughs> so, is there any any other sort of things that we can use, or do you use chelation therapy or uh, modified citrus pectin or anything like that that you use besides the zeolite to help people detox? toxicants out of their body yeah you know um that's also another thing that i was seeing toxins in my patient mycotoxins i'm like oh gosh this is totally a different world for me <laughs> another thing so, to learn <laughs> yeah i know and i'm like oh boy so i just kept researching and researching and uh there's this one doctor he's i think he's from michael labs and he's brilliant and I just started watching him and and I was like oh my gosh you know like some of the stuff I've been telling my patient to take wasn't even the right thing you know well, so like sometimes you have to avoid even glutathione with certain yeah. mold yeah, yeah. Wow. so uh, but like yeah we it, the usual thing where um you, you know you, I my normal cocktail is like vitamin c a probiotic and D and omegas, B complex, you know, and um, the, so, but what he recommends is that even higher dosages of these things. Wow. You know, so um, I mean, who's I that never, doctor? Can I ask who that is or go and look him up? Gosh, what is his name? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. Yeah, or email me. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, Michael Lab. That's his name. Mm -hmm. I, gosh, I don't know why he's escaping me, but like, um, I, I, I'm learning so much from him and he's wow. another one of those. 
Dr. Gordon where he's not doing this so like you know like make a ton of money he just wants people to know the right way to treat mycotoxins yep. Yep. and um, it really was interesting because I'm like uh, you know I give people a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and he's like they need to take it three times a day I'm oh like, yeah Whoa. I totally agree <laughs> with know? that one like, totally agree yeah so super dope high dosages even magnesium yep. I'm used to be only like 400 twice a day because you know i i'm in the mental health range and i'm like you know this is what you do and I'm like he's like a thousand milligrams twice a day and i'm like wow, wow. <laughs> and i will send you that because i i wrote notes and i thought that was really fascinating to hear yeah. that because it's important for me because yeah. like how many of my patients have struggled with their mental health and uh really it was toxins or, wow. or hormones yeah. so yeah. um Unfortunately, like I, I couldn't even find anybody I could collaborate with locally. And so um, I, I said, I need to learn this stuff. You need to learn it all I'm black. A, yeah, I'm not, you know, in a in a big city. I'm in a little town, Punta Gorda, Florida. And um, yeah, we do have, you know, it's kind of a tri-county. Like, you know, we, we have outreach to several, you know, cities out here. But like, you know, we're in a place where like it's traditional medicine, nothing against it. You know, we do need it. But I'm just saying if anybody, you know, does anything like this, I can't even think of any off the top of my head. You no, know, that we got the same problem here. <laughs> I live in a little town. It's, you, you have to. We've got a couple of good doctors in town and that's about it. And and so, you know, you end up having to learn all of these things, which takes constant learning and research. And then there's always something you haven't got to yet. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, like, but this is the wonder of the world of the, you know, um, learning from, you can learn from the best professors and the best doctors and the best scientists now online, you know, and you can, you can get that information was, you know, I couldn't learn from Dr. Gordon 10 years ago, you know, because he was in America or I couldn't learn from you or I couldn't, but now we can. Um, yeah. and that, that, that is like putting the power back in the people's hands if they're motivated to learn their thing. And this is the other thing I find with with my clients too is it's you know it's very much a co learning experience. You don't come out. I don't ever come at it from oh I've got all the answers for you. It's just like I've got some answers for you. I might need to go and work out some more answers for you. I know how to research. I know who to read out, reach out to. I know you know uh, things that you don't maybe know. But it's really important for me for my clients to actually engage in the process with me. And to bring things to me, I learn so much from my clients because they bring. Th Have you heard of so and so? You know, like, and I'm like got a list this long of the people that I haven't got to, but um, they they they're challenging me all the time and bringing me information that is of value to me and then to the next person. And so we have this collaborative approach rather than you know, um, the gods in white and they know everything and you know nothing because you're an idiot and didn't go to medical school, you know, that's not true. You know, like we've gone beyond that and I hate anybody who's arrogant, to be honest. I hate it. I just I haven't. Have... Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to all come at this from a humble place of we know bugger all and we're just scratching the surface. This is the best information we have at the time, and we do what we can with the information that we have. Um, yeah. And as the science develops, we got to de develop with it, you know. So yes, I'm not, exactly. I'm not, I'm not scared of changing my um, opinion or viewpoint on something. And sometimes realizing, oh, that probably wasn't the best thing to do because that is that is medicine and that is science that is evolving and you have to evolve with that. I mean, back in the fifties, they used to think smoking was good, right? The doctors, you know, 20,000 doctors smoke camel cigarettes, you know, like that should be a warning to us that they don't always get it right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You just, you know, it's not kind of like you just have to be a individual thinker. Unfortunately, even in my field, I mean, I always this this is my thing, Lisa. I, I I don't know how I came to be this way, but like I really do want to change the way we approach psychiatry because mm -hmm. it's time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I got colleagues that say genetic testing is a joke. Oh, you're and kidding! Then, and then they change my patients' regimen, and I'm like, wait, 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 
whoa, you're going to make them go backwards now, you know, and you know how we do things in terms of supplements and I do tell my patients three to six months, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to just be patient. Because you know what you what you've done with taking all these meds, you've thrown off your chemistry and your receptors way off. And then when I found out really you didn't need those things, you just needed certain supplements to support that. And then like, and then it, but then working backwards with some of these patients is really difficult because oh, yeah. like you know I was like no I, I gotta have my Adderall doc, but I'm, I'm trying to tell them that's not good for your genetics, but they've gotten so used to it and their brain and their wiring and their physiology and biochemistry has also learned to acclimate to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, their body and their on brain it. has, has like, is having a hard time. Yep. What I love, you know, I don't talk about it too much is I love getting treatment naive patients, like yes. especially <laughs> kids. I do see children but you know they they come in a special kind of referral because I don't just take anybody who's calling because I, I I'm not into medicating kids if I don't have to you know and so I mean... <laughs> yeah the parents that come to me now they're like the teacher says they're gonna throw them out of class if I don't do something about this you know and then so i said okay you know let, let's look at what's going on with him and and then um i find out a couple of things with their genetics put them on all natural supplements and like even just 30 days later they're like he's the best kid in the class now wow. he's sitting wow. but it didn't change the personality because i think that's why Parents don't want to put their kids on these things because it, it does. No. It kind of softens them, and you know they're falling asleep in class or not eating, and so like it's time, you know, that we have another modality to treat mental health issues without having to resort to these strong drugs. Like um, I even have a pre med student, and you know I, I really appreciate her because. Um, and she's never been on meds, but then she's worried about like going into medical school and not being able to focus and concentrate and so forth. Found out what her genetics was, fixed a couple of things, you know, and like 30 days later, here she is showing up with me going, I, I feel good. You know, like I'm able to focus and concentrate. I can deal with stress. And then, you know, part of the treatment is like holistic. Okay, you can't eat this. You have to eat that. You have to do this kind of exercise. And she was doing all of that. I'm like, oh gosh, finally somebody listens to me. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> they're doing amazing. And they yeah. don't have to be on site meds. I know, I know. Like it's and sometimes, but people just want the easy way out. They don't want to stop eating their pies and their crab McDonald's and their whatever sometimes, you know, and it's just like you're not ever going to fix the person if they're, I mean, you don't have to be a saint and never have anything, but you, you know, if you're eating on a daily basis, crap in, crap out, you know, yeah. membranes in your brain, your, the fat tissue, the wrong type of fats, the communication between the neurons, the synapses, they're not going to be working properly. And then when you'd go off those bad inflammatory foods, the trans fats, the deep fried, all of that sort of stuff, it's going to take a long time to unravel the, because that fat stays in the body, you know, for two years plus, you know, I had Dr. Michael Lewis on the, on the podcast last week. Do you know Dr. Lewis? Um, yes. He is yeah. the fish oil, fish oil, Mr. Fish oil. <laughs> and, yes, um, yes. Um, and, and he's saying, you know, like he does high doses of fish oil, like high, high doses of fish oil, especially with, with traumatic brain injuries and stuff. Um, because, you know, if we're doing just the normal, you know, up to three grams a day type of level, which is sort of the FDA, you know, generally recognized as safe sort of level, um, he said it's going to take us years to to get the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio back into balance. And, and omega-6s are not bad, but we have way too many of them in our diet yeah, and our life because they, they preserve yeah. our food better than a, than an omega-3. So it's in all of our processed foods. 
And so we're getting this 25 to one ratio when it should be like a one to one or a two to one ratio with omega threes. So he goes high doses, bathes the brain in fish oils. And I'm, yeah. I'm doing his protocols at the moment with, with myself and, and my mum um, to see what happens, you know, like, you know, I, I, and I'm already on things like um, plasmalogens. If you come across plasmalogens, I'm a big fan of plasmalogens. I've got to put that on your, your, your radar. Um, no, I, I haven't heard of that, but okay. was, yeah, you know, once I, I really got into the integrative psychiatry world, yeah. I mean, just even learning about not decreasing somebody's cholesterol to me, that was yeah. like, yeah. open. I'm like, what you, what do you mean? I, I shouldn't bring down somebody's cholesterol because this is what I taught in medicine, you know, like bring their cholesterol down yeah and destroy their brain (laughs) yeah Mm. and uh, and, uh, and i was like oh okay so when i see somebody you know because i run my labs and i do look at people's cholesterol and and one of the reasons why i do it is because it's not so much i'm looking for high cholesterol i'm looking for low okay because if your cholesterol is below 200 like i've seen somebody in one of my cases where the cholesterol is 100 i was like whoa buddy you know like yeah. that's what you're not responding to treatment so i have to give them you know high dosages you know anywhere between one to three thousand you know milligrams of fish oil yeah. and um and they're better <laughs> yeah and, you know and it's like stop that statin you know yeah and, yeah, yeah. Um, your statins can do a lot of damage benefits. Yeah, yeah two benefits it's you know, you need cholesterol to protect your brain cells because is the lipid layer mm-hmm. and around the cells, as well as you don't want to cause hormonal deficiencies. Yeah, hormones. Yeah, you don't get hormones when you don't have cholesterol. At a yeah, level. where does it come from? It comes mm-hmm. from cholesterol to pregnenolone and all the benefits of, um, you know, um, yeah. their uh, hormones. However... You know, it it really is. I, I I'm sorry. I, it's like people will claim that they're like um you know hormone experts. I'm like I'm not listening to you unless you've done Dr. Gordon's you know protocol yep. Yep. because like there's so much harm that can happen with hormone replacements when you're not thinking about it from the top. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's and, very um, complicated. It's very yes. very complicated. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it, I've seen some of these cases that, you know, like I'm in hormone replacement and I'm looking at it and going, this is not good for you because you killed off your own physiology because there's so many mental health benefits when it comes to the pre-hormones like the pregnenolone mm-hmm. and pregnenolone increases GABA in the brain. So naturally as females, you know, age, they age not supposed to have that much because that's only for quote unquote pregnancy but we have now found out there's mental health benefits increases GABA what is GABA anti-anxiety what is the age of women that come to me in their 40s and 50s yeah, looking for menopause yeah. right and, yeah, progesterone's and, dropped and the, yeah yes and so like and, and you know back then I didn't know anything and I go yeah it's your hormones but what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> but now I have the ability to say, I can do this and I can do this in a safe way. I don't have to shut off your own hormone production. And, you know, um, people get intrigued when I tell them a lot of my males don't even have testosterone shots. We're mm-hmm. using their own physiology, mm-hmm. medication, supplements to support normal hormone balance and production that mm-hmm. way we're not doing harm we're just doing good yep and using clomiphene and things like that that aren't gonna you know and and it's complicated and i hope that i can do dr mark gordon's course at some point as i haven't done the course yet but i've got a colleague who who um uh dr harris who's gone through the course and she sort of takes over my clients at that point, you know, or other, other, other ladies, another lady here who's also d- done Dr. Gordon's course, but I, I want to, you know, do it myself because it is really, really complicated. And, you know, I'm on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And I think in the past it's been wrong, wrong levels, you know, I've down. Um, and then, then it's the other thing, you've got to keep checking 
you know, are you still, because it, what was right for you maybe a year ago is maybe not right for you now because your hormones have changed and, you know, you can yeah. downregulate your receptors and, you know, and, and like I had a, a change of brand of testosterone recently and I've been taking small amounts of testosterone, but the new brand was uh, much more powerful and the dosing was wrong on the packet, right? And so I ended up like 5Xing my testosterone levels and then <laughs> wondering, well, well, man, I've got a few muscles coming out and a couple of hairs that I don't want and I'm really angry. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you don't even want to know some of those levels of testosterone in females who are on some crazy dosages and they come to me and I tell them, you need to just don't do that anymore. And a month later, yeah, I, I'm not so crazy you yeah. know uh, yeah you know because that's too much i mean you need some right you need a little bit of testosterone because then you can yes. train and your muscles you maintain your muscles and your 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 get up and go and your vigor and your vim and all of that you know um out in the social world you're stronger you're not so emotionally labile all of those sorts of positives but you've got the other side, you, you don't want to downregulate your own LH and FSH and, you know, which I had in that case, you know, because of the brand change, uh, wiped out my own, you know, LH and FSH, uh, which is, which is not good, you know? Yeah. And then there are other things like, um, uh, Macunapurians and, you know, um, I took that for a couple of weeks to try to, you know, support the growth hormone because we can't get, uh, growth hormone uh, we can't get Dr Mark Gordon's secretropin or dinotropin down here so I was trying and experimenting um, with mucinopurines that made me so like rage like wow. I don't, well I don't know you know what effect that but that's and that's a dopamine thing right now mm -hmm. when I look if I look at my genetics, I've got a dopamine deficiency. So the DRD2 gene is um uh I don't have many trees in the forest, so to speak, before the you know, the receptors. I've got a lack of receptors of dopamine. So that means that I'm always sort of chasing dopamines and makes me very mission orientated, very driven. Um yeah. but when I took the mucunapurines, and maybe it was this or something else, I don't know, but it made me very like Rah! you know like it's just like yelling at mum going you know yeah. that was that was that me um yeah and, yeah, yeah, and, in this and, yeah in addition to that you know because yeah. like the patients that go through the program and they're doing very well of course their friends are like what are you taking and i have to tell them please don't tell them because yeah. what may be good for you may not be good for them yeah, the genetic and, piece, the genetic yeah, piece, right? See, yeah. like, twins, you know, male and female, but they were both born from the same womb. I'm looking at their genetics and I look at their lives I'm like, man, you guys are just so opposite. You yeah. know, you see it in the personalities too, but I'm just like, so I always get surprised, but I shouldn't. That's why you know, I want to like, I, I when just listening to people, I, I get an idea of where they are, where their genetics fall, but I get surprised sometimes. So that's why I don't start growing things at people, you know, right away. I just want to let me know what I'm working with because, yep. like, get the when you're talking about the dopamine gene, you know, there's the um the comp T, the enzyme. Yep, the comp one. I, yep. No one could answer that question for me. I had to do my own research because I couldn't even figure this out. It, um, you know, it's you have to know whether you're normal, you're high, or you're low because the treatment is total opposite. And um, you know, it, one way is high protein diet, the other way is low protein diet, and one is um, you have to do relaxation yoga, Pilates, and and then the other one is like you know go run a marathon. You know, so, <laughs> and, and so like, it's, we have to know these things because like here I was thinking I was integrative and yeah, you know, tell everybody to go exercise and this and that. And then like, wait a minute, I was telling them something wrong. That's why I went into precision because it's like, what's good for you and what to avoid. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, 
it's it's all it's very very important that people get the precise treatment otherwise they're going to just give up <laughs> and like yeah. nothing works and then you know before i realized all this you know i i'm sure you've heard about the mthfr gene yeah. so i was throwing out l methylfolate to everybody but then i i didn't realize the correlation with that and the comp t gene i said mm -hmm. you need to just take a step back because I didn't know that back then, you know, when I first started in genetics. And so like I was throwing L-methylfolate at people and there's not half of them were calling me going, that made me anxious. And I looked at them like, why? That should have worked for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then like, then I started researching more of the, you know, because like what you said, you know, we are not just the heart. We are not, even the genetics, you have to look at how they correlate with each other. Like, yeah, this know, is the haplotype. You know, you're not just your single genes, but how does that gene yeah, work with that gene, with that know, gene, with so, that gene? And that's when it gets very, very confusing. <laughs> and yeah. That yeah. So there's times where I see people with MTHFR and low cop T. So mm -hmm. sometimes I don't even give them L methylfolate. I have to give them something like 5 HTP mm -hmm. because you want to avoid that dopamine route. You want them to make more serotonin to counteract some of that dopamine that they cannot metabolize. Wow. But then you know, other way around, people who are MTHFR and they are high comp T. I mean, this, this is the reason why you may see people who are problems with addiction. Because not only they cannot make this stuff, but their brain is metabolizing that dopamine so Super quickly. Fast. So they're that dopamine yeah and so you know um i'm also um certified in addiction medicine so you know we're always taught don't judge don't judge and i'm like yeah of course you know i, I want to hear the story so i don't even ask them anymore why you like to do this i always ask how do you feel you know mm -hmm. when you use drugs or whatever you want to do watch pornography or you know Game Whatever on. the case, yep. Yeah, so um, then it gives me an idea, like, hmm, you know, I mean, maybe they need more support with dopamine. So, so I always call the people with MTHFR deficiency and high conti, I call them the double whammy gene. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at, man, you are dopamine deprived. No wonder you're <laughs> out there jumping off buildings and <laughs> putting stuff in your nose. And, you know, but then it's, it's it kind of validates them as a person. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, because there's a reason why you're that way, because you can beat yourself up about why you're that way. I mean, and, yeah. you know, I've got addictive tendencies, and I think it's that DRD2 gene and the ADRA2B gene, and the, you yeah. know, I'm a, a medium comp, so I should be okay there, and I don't have the MTHFR, but I've got a couple of other, you know, and it, it is complicated. It's really yes. complicated as a clinician. Like, I don't pretend to know half of what I need to know still. But you've got yeah. some tools there that you can you can work with, and you could keep learning for the next twenty years. I think and still be a, a baby in the space. <laughs> and so, but yeah, 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 some major yeah. ones like that. Yeah. When you you know inform the patient, well, you know it's not always about gene too. It's about you know inflammation and trauma and, and uh, hormones and you know toxins and, and you know so that that way it's like. Once I put that out for the patient, you know, they get overwhelmed thinking about, oh my gosh, this is all that's wrong with me. I was like, well, think about how you've struggled with your mental health for decades, trying to find the right medicine because, okay, this is the, this is the thing, uh, you know, like psych meds don't address inflammation and psych meds don't treat hormones. If you, if those two things are really what's causing your mental health issues, then you're going about it the wrong way, thinking a psych med is going to do it. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not against psychiatric medicines, but like, let's figure out what's wrong first. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can get away with not having to give that to you. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes there's cases where like, okay, I've done everything I could with natural and what's, you know, whatever I need to do to support their brain, but it's still not working or they're still having a lot of issues, then, you know, yeah, then reach for that psych med. But then perhaps that medicine is going to work the way it's supposed to work because you've got the brain healthy, you got the brain prepared, you got the brain filled with the right things, then that medicine is actually going to do something.
Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like, um, you know, I've got a hyperbaric oxygen therapy clinic and huge fan of hyperbaric because, it, you know, it was mum's um, cornerstone of her recovery. But it, it, when I first started, it was like, yeah, get them in the hyperbaric and yeah. off you go and do a block of treatments and you need repeated treatments and all of that's correct, right? But now, you know, I've been learning from Dr. Scott Scher, it's like, you know, you need to prepare the person to have an optimal response in the hyperbaric. So that is looking at um, what are you, um, you know, how is your nutrient status? You know, how are your hormones? How, you know, how are your lifestyle factors? You know, all of these things so that you optimize their time in the tank, which, you know, and it costs money. So you want to have the best things on board, you know, if we're dealing with a brain injury, that might be ketones and it might be fish oils and it might be plasmalogens and it might be whatever the case is, you know, but they've got that on board with them, not just doing the the hyperbaric on its own. It's it's a, let's prepare your body for the, for the treatment. Yeah. So you've talked to Scott. That's my buddy. Oh, really? He's amazing. I love him. He's just, uh, you know, just yeah. super brain, he, a super brain. Yeah, he brought me into one of his like, you know, podcasts too. And ah. he was excited <laughs> because I'm like, I'm your first, right? And I go, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're my second, Lisa. So, so, well, yeah, well, man, yeah. I'm in good company then. I mean, I, I think Dr. Scott is just absolutely amazing. He's been on three, two times, three times on my, my show. I've really? read so much. Yeah, I, I I would love to do the home hope course with Dr. Ted, and um, but you know, just too many things to do right now. But um, yeah. I, I think Dr. Scott is is the the preeminent world best on the hyperbaric and so many other things. The GABAergic pathways, I've learned so much from him on GABA and methylene blue and yeah, you know, he's uh, oh. taught me a lot. You know, outside yeah. even. But, you know, to give creed to our program, he is the one who created our protocol. Wow. So, um, you know, we don't have that machine at our office because it's too big for us. <laughs> and um, the cost, yeah. you know. We, oh, yeah, that's not, expensive. You know, yeah. And then, but, you know, if we're doing all these modalities and still, like, Maybe they're not getting what they need to get, but now they're ready for HBOT because their inflammation is down, their hormones are right, their deficiencies are fixed, and then they're ready for HBOT. And then, and then, so that's what he taught me too. It's like, hey, you can't just yeah. put somebody. You know, we, had oh, the, oh, 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 we had the oh, same oh, teacher. <laughs> Mark, oh, throw some testosterone I'm like yeah I know how to do this and then he like you know take a step back same thing with Scott take a step back okay we, we need to do these things first yeah. and um yes he created a protocol said I need for you to create a mental health protocol so we have um you know mental uh HBOT for dementia ADHD and you know all, all those different protocols the high you know diagnosis that come in you know, for, for patients. So we mm-hmm. have that protocol, we have that recipe, so we can just give it to them and say, you know, take this to wherever you want. If you can afford the HBOT, more power to you. you yeah, know? absolutely. I, I think that's a super good approach to, to prepare everything for it. Dr. Yeah. Michael, you've been absolutely wonderful today. I better go and um, get mum her coffee <laughs> before she oh, okay. <laughs> goes to sleep on the extra cycle. <laughs> but I, I just want to, you know, say you're amazing. You're the first psychiatrist that I've had on, I think. And um, you're the first um, uh, holistic psychiatrist, definitely, that, that takes this holistic integrated approach. And I, I think uh, it's wonderful that people can get access to people like you that can really put all of the pieces of the puzzle, take away the blame and the guilt and the look at the, the physical stuff of it you know, and and fix the actual imbalances, the actual nutrients, the hormones, the stuff we've been talking about, Um, and then use different tools like the magnetic stim, which we didn't even get into, the uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, You know, all of these modalities that you can use to actually get long-term healing and to understand that it's a process. I think that's what I've taken away from today is, yeah, it's a, you know, 
multi-pronged approach. It's looking at you as a whole person and it's doing all of these, using all of these tools to get you better. And it's going to take a while, you know, yeah. and that's, that's yeah. just a um, beautiful truth, I think. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Thank you. And is there any, any, um, if people want to work with you, can they do that remotely? Like, obviously you've got a lot of listeners in New Zealand, Australia. Um, do you work online at all? Yes, we, we do have telemedicine. And, um, if you are in the state of Florida, we can treat you telemedicine. Um, uh, but the way that we've done our program through the Brainwell program, um, we can look at your genetics, we can look at your labs, we can look at your hormones, and we can come up with a 20, 30 page treatment plan. And, you know, that's not like practicing medicine per se. This is just, here are my opinions. This is what I would recommend. And, um, you know, you can take that to your doctor. And if I recommend that you need prescriptions, you know, some of the, some people do need like, you know, shots of testosterone right away and they can just take that and, and they can work with their doctor. And you know, I always tell them, don't, you know, don't hesitate for their doctor to contact me if they're kind of confused because it is a lot. And then, so like, um, yeah, we do not, do not limit ourselves to, you know, yeah. just being here in Florida. Awesome. But like, it's awesome. We have a lot of work to do in the state of Florida too. Yeah, 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 do. But that, that, well, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. And your website, where can people find you or you're on social yeah, media? It's um, paradisebehavioral.com. Paradise that's Behavioral. It. And we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Paradise yeah. Behavioral. Yeah, they, and then, yeah, go to the website. They can put their name in there if they want to be a patient at the Brain Well Program or if they're in the state of Florida, they just want to be a patient at the office. And I have nurse practitioners that also will just do standardized medicine. And then so, like, I get to deal with the really difficult cases, which I love. It's actually fun, actually. You know, it takes, <laughs> it takes the throne out of, like, here's another script, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm using my brain. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh you're you're absolutely wonderful dr meisel thank you so much and we look okay. forward to maybe hearing you on again so thank you yes yes we will okay thank you so much